Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuned in to the Princeton Investment. I'm your gracious host, Prince Dykes, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via the wonderful city and state of Honolulu, Hawaii. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. <clears throat> so let's jump straight into it. The 2020 election, as you can see, I thought the election was going to be over by this time. You know, we had our presidential election on the 20, on November 2nd, that was. We had it on November 2nd. And I thought by this time we will be done with the election by now. But apparently we're not. We have a lot of things going on with uh, the ballots. You know, the, the last I checked, they were still waiting on Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and things like that. So in this episode, this is not a political show. I want to let everybody know that people always say, hey, you know, well, who, who do you want to win? Who do you hope win? That's not what this show is about. This show is about preparing your portfolio to take advantage of either win or the election. By now, I thought we would have had a winner, but obviously we have to wait a couple more days, weeks, months, or a year as we look at the electoral colleges across the globe. So the thing is, you got to ask yourself the question now is, what if we have a Biden win or what if we have a current President Trump win? You know, I don't know President Trump, if he loses, he's already talking about the elections rigged and he's going to take it to the Supreme Court. He already did a declare, um, he already declared himself a winner on the night of the elections. So it's so much going on, so much can happen. I think President Trump is going to do two things. I think he's going to buy out swiftly or he's going to stay around a long time. So he's going to bow swiftly or he's going to stay around a long time and he's going to fight the ballot. So what happens? That's if he has uh, unfavorable re-election. But then again, we have his opponent, President Hopeful Biden. Biden right now, people are looking at for him to win. And Biden, as he comes along, um, as he comes along, he's pretty much in a cruiser seat. He's in the best seat. All he has to do is pretty much win Nevada, or Georgia, or Arizona, or whatever the case may be. But in this episode on this show, we're not going to get into what politicians do. We're going to say, well, what if we have a Biden win, Prince? What's going to happen? What, what things are going to go up? And also, what if we have a Trump win? So now two weeks ago, we had a, a guest on our show by the name of James Forland, 40-something year Wall Street bet. And he made a very nice comparison of the S&P 500 to the uh, presidential election. You know, for prime example, he said the S&P 500 has been up the last three months. The S&P 500 is up for the year. That's a great indicator of we are going to keep what we already have. And what I mean by keep what we already have, we are going to keep the same president, meaning President Trump, right? But, you know, going into the election on Monday and Tuesday, you know, the last week, the market had significant downturns, meaning that when you see markets downturn right before election, that could be fear of uncertain and a fear uncertainty or fear or a, of a change, meaning a change of guards could be potentially could be happening or fear of uncertainty. When Monday and Tuesday came along, we had massive rallies in the market on the S&P 500, NASDAQ and the Dow Jones. So the markets went into a bullish run on Monday and then on Tuesday, giving a great indicator that we was going to keep in power what we had in power. And then on Wednesday, as things got a little rocky, as everybody woke up Wednesday morning and saw that President Biden, hopeful Biden, could potentially pull this off, the market continued to rally, right? So now we are in a crazy time, or uncertain time. As, as I'm speaking now, the Dow futures are starting to sink. You're seeing the Dow Jones cool off. You're seeing stocks cool off. You're seeing things kind of get back to reality, as we see, as we may say. And with that being said, as you see the market decline, notice you see a particular section going up. When you see it right now, when I'm looking at the futures, I see that all major indexes are pointing down. I see that all majority of the stocks are pointing down except for green energy stocks. Prince, why is that important? Who cares? Green energy is very important because as you know, President Hopeful uh, Biden is very big on green energy. So if he is elected, President, you will see things like green energy, solar energy, wind turbulent, solar panel stocks, electronic vehicle stocks, you will see them benefit from green energy stocks starting to go up. Now, why would that particularly happen? That would happen mainly due to the fact of 
Biden is, you know, right now we have federal, let's go back, let me, before I trip over my words there, we have to keep in mind business and politics. What did business and politics do? Right now to get green energy, if I was to make my house uh, green energy efficient by getting solar panels, I would get a 15% tax break. Don't quote me on the exact tax break, but there is a tax break for getting solar panels put on your house from the federal government. Meaning when I file my taxes, I can say, hey, I spent $20,000 making my house solar, uh, getting solar panels, and guess what? I can get a couple thousand dollars back. That's the way to incentivize people to go green. Also, that's good for energy stocks. If you are a fan of uh, energy stocks, I mean green energy. I'm not talking about oil. I'm not talking about oil. Uh, President Biden is very big again of going against oil. So we can see oil will go down. I can't see oil doing very well up on the President Biden presidency, but I can see green energy doing very well. Also, I put this out many times before. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, over the next 10 years, the fastest, the top three fastest growing sectors of labor will be number one, a wind turbulent, two, a nurse practitioner, and number three, a solar practitioner, if I'm saying that correct. Don't, uh, you know, if I'm saying it, but people who deal with solar energy, who can um, fix solar energy, who can build solar energy, who can put panels on people's houses, who can build solar farms. Over the next 10 years, that's gonna be one of the fastest growing jobs. Also, wind turbulence. Those wind turbulence we see as we drive down the road, the big farms in Indiana and across the country, middle of America, we see a bunch of wind turbulence. That is the way of clean energy. And we're getting less and less to do with oil. Also pay attention, California in 2035, California government came out and said, you know what? You will not be able to purchase um, a gasoline vehicle in 2035. Car dealerships will not be able to purchase gasoline cars in 2035. That is very huge for the energy sector. Why? Because energy itself, um, that was slowly, you know, I don't think that everybody's going to be driving electric cars within the next five, 10, 20 years. But over time, you will see our dependency on oil slowly, slowly dry up. And you will see companies like Tesla, who's right now in charge, who's, who's leading the charge in electronic vehicles, um, an American company that's leading the charge for electronic vehicles, kind of take shape. So right now, you can see Tesla benefiting from a President Biden win. You can see green energy benefiting from a President Biden win. Prince, where do you get this information from? You can go on the president's website. And what's one of his big things is about green energy, renewable energy, things like that. Well, Prince, that's a great thing that you said. How can I invest? Are you telling me to go out and buy a bunch of Tesla? No, absolutely not. I'm telling you to do your due diligence. Look at energy companies. Um, if you want an energy uh, I, ETF, you have iClean, I-C-L-E, uh, I-C-L-N. That's India, Charlie, November, and November. Oh, India, Charlie, Lima, November, November. India, Charlie, Lima, November. That's a stock symbol um, that follows majority of clean energy. Now, the difference between a company uh, ETF like XLE, if I'm not mistaken, which is an energy ETF, versus a iClean is XLE holds a lot of oil. It holds a lot of things like Chevron and Exxon oil and things like that. You don't want oil. I'm not saying that oil is bad, but I'm thinking if you're someone who's trying to bet on clean energy and you believe what I'm saying, that clean energy will be the future, um, you got to be careful when you invest in energy because a lot of energy companies have oil in them. You know, they have gas stations and things like that. So you will want to go to renewable energy. You can buy a renewable energy mutual fund, a renewable energy ETF, or you can buy renewable energy companies. Uh, companies like Enphase is one that I really like. I like their finances. I like Solar Edge. Why do I like their finances? If you peel back the 10K and the 10Q reports, you will see large amounts of retained earnings. I don't know who's going to dominate that future, but you can see a large amount of profit. These are profitable companies, companies that are holding money, um, retaining their earnings, have a good cash flow, and have a good control of debt. So going into the future, when you have a company that has a lot of earnings, I tell people this all the time, when I, I, I don't pay much attention when I'm reading the financial report on who has the most amount, who makes the most amount of money, I look to see who retains the most amount of money. 
when companies retain the most amount of money into shareholders equity, when they retain, when you look at the balance sheet and you look at their bottom line, how much money they are retaining, that's a great indicator that a company will slowly expand. For prime example, let's look at Apple. Apple is a trillion, $2 trillion company, if I'm not mistaken, $1 trillion to $2 trillion company. The stock is only trading for $100. Everybody's concerned about the iPhone sale and the iPad sale. My big thing with Apple is I look at the large amount of retained earnings. And when I look at the large amount of retained earnings, that's a great indicator that the company will most likely, Apple will most likely make a big acquisition. Or they may come out with an Apple car, uh, an Apple car that may be self-driving. They may come out with an Apple house. I don't know. But when a company has a large amount of retained earnings, that's a great indicator that the company will move into the future of doing, making a big acquisition or going into an advanced level product that they may not have already done and completed. So yes, the iPhone 12, I am an iPhone person. I am a MacBook person. I am a Mac product person, but um, I don't believe that Mac products, I don't see the growth in them in the future because my personal opinion, Apple is not as in innovative as they once were when Steve Jobs was here. After the iPhone 4, we have seen a decline in uh, innovation from Apple. But with that large amount of earnings, look what they went out and done. Look at all the acquisitions they're, they're making. They uh, acquired Beats by Dre. They acquired a couple other companies, smaller technology companies. And I think that with a company, they're now making their own chips. So while, when companies has a large amount of retained earnings on that balance sheet, and it has a growing amount of retained earnings over the last three to five, 10 years, that company, that CEO is going to be thinking of, with these massive earnings, what can I get into? Can I build a, uh, a Apple cup or Apple, whatever the case may be? So I can see that as going into the future, uh, what we're going to do. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to get into more business and politics. And we're going to talk about what else is going to be big if we see a President Trump win. And we're going to talk about what else is going to be big if we see a President Biden win. And we're also going to get into Uber. But before we do that, that's going to be after the break. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back from the break, we're going to get into more things that can benefit a President Biden's win. And also what can benefit a President Trump's win and also Uber and Prop 22. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, and we are back. And today we're going to finish up talking about before the break, we spoke about, you know, the big election that we have, the election that we still have in the ballots. We don't know who the president is going to be. We probably won't know for a couple more days, a couple more weeks as we wait on electoral college votes from a couple key battleground states. So with that being said, uh, as we look at this election, people are anticipating probably, probably that we will have a new president of President Biden. What does that mean with the election? This is the first time we've seen a president uh, become unseated in about 27 years. You know, the last time we've seen a president only do one term has been 27 years. Um, president Trump, he faced a lot of adversity this year, you know, in the middle of a pandemic. And we also were in the middle of civil unrest around the country, the nation that may have swayed votes that made it very tough for him, but he's still holding on to the fight. We don't know, but everybody's kind of, and the market now is shifting towards a Biden win. Why is it shifting towards a Biden win? Right now, stock futures are starting to decline at the rallying for two days. 
for the whole week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the market rally. Now we're seeing a pullback, and we're also seeing a rally in green stocks, renewable energy stocks, something that President Biden is very big on. Now, with that said, Prince, what else can we see that's going to make uh, that I can shape my portfolio to to make me some money? Here we go, right here. Notice in the beginning of the pandemic, what happened? What happened after we had a Trump presidency? What happened when we had civil, a civil unrest? Guns. Who remember guns? Gun stocks. Everybody went out and brought guns, and most important in buying guns, they had a shortage of ammunition. I've had friends that went out and brought guns with no ammunition. So I can see a massive jump in gun stocks and ammunition. As people, some people, um, you got to think about it. Trump has earned millions and millions of votes. And people believe that if we have a president buying, um, if we have a president buying win, we're going to see a lot of gun fever that people will start to take on. People will start to buy more ammo. People will start to buy more guns. And as gun stocks go up, you're going to see ammunition stocks. So some of the big names, you have Smith & Western. Um, you have stock symbols like uh, uh, Powell, P-O-O, P-O-W-W is an ammunition company versus O-L-N, which is also an ammunition company. These are ammunition company and guns I can see becoming very popular if we have a change of the guards because some people will feel as though we had a lot of civil unrest and with that civil unrest, or even if we have a Trump win, some people become scared. And I think that more people um, fear and greed, their fear will start to set in to say, hey, I need to buy more guns. I need to get more ammunition, things like that. So you got to be very careful out there. You're going to see a lot of gun fever going on. So you can add or you can look to seek to add something like gun stocks and ammunition. More importantly, what good is a gun without ammunition? You know, ammunition is more important than guns. Uh, uh, like the comedian Chris Rock said, he said, if you want to slow down violence and people shooting guns, just raise the price of ammunition. If one bullet costs $100, I guarantee you, you will slow down the amount of people shooting guns because people will, <laughs> they will think twice about shooting that gun because they know how much your ammunition costs. But look out for ammunition, look out for gun stocks to also be a big factor. Ladies and gentlemen, you can notice, as you can notice throughout the show, I have been talking about how business and politics are go hand in hand. Some people don't realize how business and politics go hand in hand. For prime example, President Biden says, hey, guess what? I want to wipe away your student loans. Sounds cool. Of course, who wouldn't want their student loans wiped away? But ask yourself, how does the government make money? The government makes money by increasing taxes. And it increases taxes usually on business owners and property owners and things like that. And guess what? When you increase taxes, you would notice that on the income statement, on the income statement up on the, the uh, income taxes, you will see on the income statement how much the company had to pay in income taxes. So the more income tax a company has to pay, that's the less retained earnings. And I spoke about retained earnings before the election. I like, not before the election, before the break. I spoke about how a company having retained earnings that's continuing to pile is a great thing. It could be a great sign of an expansion. But if their retained earnings is going out in dividends or taxes and things like that, that's hurting their bottom line, that can slow down a company's potential expansion. That can hurt its earnings reports. If it hurt its earnings reports, that could send the stocks down. So be very careful of what you wish for of how taxes and politicians play a big role into politics. Speaking of business and politics, let's get into Uber. As you've seen, Uber, as of yesterday, had a massive day. Today, it has uh, put out its earnings report. I haven't had a chance to review its earnings report yet. Um, but I think the last time I looked, the stock was trading down 2% as of today. But yesterday, Uber went up 14%. And then the following day today, it also went up another 2% today. So over the last two days, Uber has gone up about 16% due to its ability to beat Proposition 22. Proposition 22 was essentially going to shut down what they call it the gig economy. You know, we do a gig with DoorDash, or we may do a gig with um, DoorDash or Uber or Lyft or uh, things like that or whatever, you know, people call those gigs. So the gig economy was going to change. Proposition 22 was put on the ballots in California. California wanted to take, they wanted to make people that drove for Uber and Lyft, they wanted to make those people workers. If they turned those people into workers, that means that Uber and Lyft would have had to increase their payroll by a massive amount of millions of people. 
So for prime example, today, if I wanted to, after this show, I wanted to get out of this show and drive downtown Denver and drive around Uber, I can do that. I can turn on my phone. You know, I think my car is a little old to do Uber, but that's another conversation. But I could go down, I can grab my car, I can drive Uber. And as I drive around with Uber, I can collect money. And I don't, I don't have to worry about benefits or clocking in on time and clocking out. I can work for three hours, two hours, do two or three rides and go home, right? Make a little extra money on the weekend or maybe in between jobs. Some people are in between jobs. So they may do a little bit of Uber. They may do a little bit of Lyft. They might drive to DoorDash. They may do Uber Eats. But the government came out and said, no, you need to make Prince an employee, meaning that if you make me an employee, now you're on payroll. And everybody knows when you have payroll, they have this thing called payroll tax. And when you have payroll tax, that's great for the federal government. The government only makes money one way that we just spoke about this, taxes, right? So payroll taxes, that's a great income source for California, but it literally would have wrecked the Uber business model. It essentially would have turned them into another taxi cab service. Something that Uber was trying to get away from would make them so innovative and change the way that we all catch rides uh, with Uber. So they put that on the ballot. And, you know, of course, the Uber drivers out there in the gig economy and the Californians said, no, why was this so significant? This was going to set the precedence for the other, uh, other states. Everybody had all eyes on California. If California would have passed Proposition 22, that would have opened up New York, Texas, Colorado, Georgia, Florida, other lawmakers to say, hey, we want to do what we want to do what California did. Now to combat that, Uber said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to turn around. And if you guys and girls want us to take a uh, if you guys and girls want us to make people workers, then what we're going to do is we're just going to leave California. So Uber said, hey, we're going to leave California, which would have hurt us. They would have lost one of their largest customers base in California. Then what would have, what have, what, what have, what would have stopped Florida from doing the same thing? Let's say if New York wanted to do the same thing, that could have been very bad and hurt the top line revenue for Uber. But since they passed Proposition 22, that means that nobody else is probably going to try it because California the voters of California has set the precedence. And as you guys and girls know, I am an investor in Uber. I believe that uh, Uber looks like Facebook did back in 2013. That's my personal opinion. Um, Uber has a lot of growth to do. Uber has a lot of time to become profitable. Um, Uber, but you can see Uber has three dynamics versus Lyft. Lyft just gives rides. Uber gives rides, it also has Uber Eats and it also has Uber Freights. So it made a big, big uh, a very big political move um, yesterday by beating Proposition 22, and that had been lingering on for about a year now. So they put it on the ballots. The, the drivers and the people of California spoke and said, back off, we want to remain contractors, and that's what happened. This is why business and politics is very important, because if Proposition 22, if they would have not beaten Proposition 22, they would have shut down all their Uber operations in California, and then that could have spread it without the nation, that could have spread it throughout the nation, also spread it throughout the world, hurting the top line revenue, which would have hurt the bottom line revenue of Uber, which probably would have made me move on from Uber, sell it, move on to another company. But since they beat it, uh, the, I haven't got a chance to look at their earnest report, but I think they're in a nice position to compete and dominate the gig space economy. You remember Uber tried to buy DoorDash for $2.5 billion. They couldn't, so they went and brought Postmates for $2.5 billion. So that's something very, very important to pay attention to, um, how business and politics go hand in hand and go together. Now let's do a recap. I know that was a lot today. We spoke about the election. Uh, this was supposed to be a post-election episode, but apparently, you know, we still have some ballots to count out there. Uh, looking like we're going to have a President Biden when um, the markets are now pointing that direction as the markets point down under a President Biden's win, we can see renewable energy, things like wind turbulence, solar panels, electronic vehicles. President, President Biden is very big on using renewable energy. He's not big on oil, right? So I will move away from oil and I will be looking into opportunities into renewable energy. Also under President Biden win, um, you may scare a lot of people, just like the last time we've had, we saw we had, uh, Ammunition, ammunition companies, 
gun stocks, gun stocks and ammunition. People started to load up on guns. Um, as President Trump won, people loaded up on guns. And I think that uh, Trump has a very big loyal fan base that some people may think the world is coming to an end. So we can see gun stocks and ammunition, right? So now you have to think about um, what you're looking at for everyone that's out there, right? You have ammunition, and we spoke about how business and politics play a direct role with each other, where Uber almost, business was all, almost uh, destroyed by Proposition 22, but we've seen Uber was able to get by that and win Proposition 22, and we saw the stock go up 14% on Uber, and I think it went out about 10% on Lyft. So business and politics go hand in hand, so that's a great thing there. So ladies and gentlemen, um, if you want more of the show, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, tune in every week, email right here in the description box. You can get more from Think Tech Hawaii and all the awesome shows. I'm the Prince of Investing. We come here with a financial literacy show bi-weekly, uh, excuse me, bi-monthly. Uh, every two weeks we come here and do a show. We've been doing it now, I think, for about three years. Thank you guys and girls for the great response. And until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out. Thank you, and happy investing.